Welcome to ADHD Whiskey, my name is Matt, and today we're reviewing two brand new products from Jack Daniels. And these aren't just two any ordinary products, no. These are the two oldest products that Jack Daniels has released in like, a long time. Today, we're pouring and swirling and nosing and tasting and scoring Jack Daniels 12 year and 10 year. Before we pour these brand new Tennessee whiskey's asses into some whiskey glasses, we need to talk about today's video sponsor, Into the AM. IntoTheAM.com has some of the best clothing on planet Earth, including this graphic tee I'm wearing today. All of their shirts are pre-shrunk and pretty friggin' awesome. They have brand new graphic tees that were just recently released. They have basic tees and jogger pants and underpants and bomber jackets and outerwear. And they just recently released brand new athletic tees, which are like moisture wicking and UPF 30 plus. I'm really looking forward to getting my hands on those because guess what? I want to start being more athletic and I think that will help. So go to intotheam.com slash ADHD. Use code ADHD at checkout and you'll save yourself 10% off your order. Now that we've talked about today's video sponsor, let's talk about two brand new whiskeys from Jack Daniels. 10 year batch two comes in at 97 proof and it's 10 years old. America. This batch came from about 300 barrels and those barrels spent eight years up on the top floors of the Jack Daniels Rick houses and then two years in a lowered position so that they didn't lose all the dang whiskey out of those barrels. And in the other glass, the 12 year version of Jack Daniels Tennessee whiskey. This one coming in at a little higher proof, 107. America. Just like the 10 year, the 12 year also spent the majority of its aging life way up top in the rickhouses and then was lowered to the lower portions of the rickhouses later in its aging life. There's been a lot of news recently about the Jack Daniels distillery and the whiskey fungus that they say is taking over Lynchburg, Tennessee. But I'm not interested in that news. But speaking of fun guys, I was lucky enough to do a virtual tasting with master distiller Chris Fletcher with these. At that point, I had a miserable cold and couldn't taste anything. But now, here, on camera, you're gonna get first impressions. What do I think of the 10 and 12 year? Let's dig into the 10 year. 10 year color is what you would expect from a 10 year, nearly 100 proof whiskey. Very dark, beautiful color for a nose. Wow, whoa. That is, wow, that smells delicious. The oak is jumping out of the glass. There is a delicious oaky banana bread. Wow. It's a warm, mushy, just delicious banana bread that just came out of the oven. And it just comes out of the oven as just fills the kitchen and then passes through the kitchen into the sitting room and family room and then up the stairways into the bedrooms and even into the stinky bathroom that no longer stinks but instead smells like delicious fresh baked banana bread. Wow. If it were cooked in an oak coffin for like 10 years. The nose on this 10 year is just incredible. Down the hatch. Ding. Wow. Yeah, that is, dang, that's good. You're getting that red fruity finish coming from the yeast of Jack Daniels. Apparently, the red wine finish that I've been talking about so much that I get on the Jack Daniels products isn't from their barreling, isn't from their cooperage. It's from their yeast. It's from their yeast. They got a sweet yeast and I friggin' dig it. I'm really falling in love with that super red, delicious, sweet, yeasty finish. It's a beast of a yeast that they got at Jack Daniels and I'm willing to fall in love with it and it swept me off my yeasty feetsies. The 10 year is a very, very good experience. It coats the mouth really well. It's very viscous and oily. There is a tiny bit of drying on the back end, a tiny bit of drying, but you're gonna get that with, you know, aged bourbon. You're gonna get a little bit of drying on the back of the palate, 
it's definitely not a knock on it. It's definitely not anything bad about it. It's really, really good. But you do get that little bit of drying on the back, which is typical of an oaky bourbon. This 10-year Jack Daniels batch two receives a score for me today of 8.4. It is extremely good. It is great. It is a great bourbon. It is a great friggin' whiskey. Man, oh man. If you're not on the Jack Daniels train yet, if you're still like on the side of the train tracks watching the Jack Daniels train pass you by, if you're just sitting there thinking that you've had old number seven and you're not a big fan, then you are missing out and good for you. Super happy because more for me. 8.4 on the 10 year. Now let's move to the 12 year, the elder. The elder of the bunch, the 12 year, coming in at 107 proof, 107 proof on this little guy. This one's taking even more of a fruity turn. The banana bread, the oaky banana bread on the 10 year is turning into a sweeter banana runt on the 12 year. It literally reminds me of those crank machines that you put the quarter in and you and you put your hand and ding up the top, ding, and then you get a handful of the runts. And if you're lucky, you got a banana one. It kind of reminds me of a handful of runts candy. If you popped them all in at once, and I've never done that before. Never. The nose on the 10 year is so good, but the nose on the 12 year is like a step up in the sweeter direction of like, it's like Willy Wonka's candy factory if Willy Wonka distilled his candy and made everybody schlammered. Can you imagine a gigantic friggin' river of Jack Daniels 12 year just just jumping in it? Cannonball! Sploosh! Splashes of Jack Daniels Tennessee whiskey go flying in the air, and then all your friends are trying to catch it in their mouth. Uh, you know what I mean? Because I would. I wouldn't let a drop go to waste. Wow. Ooh, a little bit of butter. Like a delicious grass fed friggin' slab of butter put in a hot fryer and then you throw some Runt's candies into it. A little bit of cinnamon and plantain. Some of those candied almonds you get at the fair. I will not tell a fib. These are kind of blowing my mind apart right now. 12 year down the hatch. Oh, wow. Holy shit, pardon my language, good grief. Okay, this 12 year Jack Daniels Tennessee whiskey is remarkable. If, I have, if I've used that word already today, I'm sorry. It's outstanding. The candy sweetness mixed with the oak, their high corn mash bill is really shining through here hard, super hard. And then that red, that red wine finish I typically get that's associated with their yeast is like a friggin' beast. It's melded perfectly. It's balanced perfectly. It hits you right in the back of the palate and just kind of like, boom, like a friggin' tour bus hitting a sand dune. You know what I mean? But that tour bus was running on E85 and that sand dune was made out of like, you know, burnt table sugar. This one, the 12 year is much more unique than the 10 year, I feel. I feel like the 10 year is so stinking good. And you get a lot of the oaky characteristics from it that you would, that you would expect from a 10 year old whiskey. The 12 year is like a different animal. It's like a 12 point duck. You know what I mean? The 12 year is gonna receive a score of 8.8. Eight, 8.8, it's exceptional. The 12 year is exceptional. If you can find one of these and get your hands on one, definitely pick one up, you won't be disappointed. The 107 proof is like perfect. It does everything in your mouth that you want. A complex, delicious, sweet, sippable, enjoyable, shareable whiskey to do. This 12 year Jack Daniels is friggin' so damn good. If you can find the 10 year, get the 10 year as well. The 10 year is great. The 10 year is great. The 12 year though, I feel like the 12 year is just a little bit leveled up. It's just a little bit more bow right in your face. Thank you Jack Daniels for sending these samples. 
Um, you can expect these to hit shelves starting at the end of March, from what I understand, so, you know, keep an eye out. Apparently the release of the 10 and 12 year is gonna be a larger release than last year's 10 year, so they're gonna be more 10 years available, plus 12 years available. Both the 12 year and 10 year this year are gonna have a larger release than the 10 year did last year. So if you were able to get your hands on a 10 year last year, then hopefully that means you'll be able to get your hands on a 10 and 12 this year. I don't know. Distribution of course is extra strange. And as soon as reviews come out where people are saying that it's very good, then all of a sudden shit gets weird and like people buy up every single damn bottle they can buy and sell it on the internet for exorbitant prices. Don't do that. You know what I mean? Come on. Make your money doing something else, like rigging a lottery or selling feet pictures on the internet to weird people who like feet, like me. That's gonna do it for today's video. I highly recommend both the 12 and 10 year. They're out of this world, friggin' love them. My name is Matt, this is ADHD Whiskey, and like I always say, keep your head in the clouds, but your mind on buying extension cords, as many extension cords as you can because sometimes plugs aren't where you want them, but extension cords make plugs go wherever you want them. You know what I mean? It's like, hey, I got a plug over there, but I want to plug in something over here. Guess what solves that problem? Extension cords. And then you get another extension cord to plug into that one. Actually, I think that's unsafe, Never mind. I don't know what the exact rules are on how many things you can plug into one outlet anymore, but I just love extension cords. Across the yard, across the neighborhood, I've got one plugged into my neighbor's house down the street who's got an outdoor outlet. You know what I mean? Run that baby all the way over here, plug stuff into that. His problem, not mine, whatever. It's like your own little electrical system throughout your house. Oh, don't trip on the extension cord. Which one? Any of them, because they're all dangerous. And don't try to staple them to walls either because you might get electrocuted. That's just a little bit of FYI, the more you know. But extension cords are the thing of the future. And if I had a billion dollars, I would invest them into extension cords because you can never have electricity too far away. That makes sense.